Hey everyone, sorry for not uploading in a month. <laughs> I think the last video I uploaded was of the uh, unboxing of the Fast and Furious charger and uh, the wide body charger. And I've done a couple builds here and there and this one's my most recent, but like, I don't know, recently just haven't been feeling motivated. I'd kind of come up with an idea put a model kit in my cart online and then just go you know I just don't feel like buying it and then just kind of scrap the idea but uh this one was an exception for that because it was a cheap model you can get this for pretty cheap it's a snap together kit and for all the people that complain about snap together models and say oh you can't build and paint them they're toys well this was to kind of break away from that because I wanted to show that, yes, you can build them right out of the box and paint them and get something really, really nice out of them. So this is that. What I did is I painted it a silver color. I believe it's a tester's silver, if I'm not mistaken. Metallic silver. And I painted the wheels black. I just literally uh primered and did black over the chrome so i didn't even dechrome them and it turned out pretty good like you can't even tell because i did not want to put chrome wheels on a raptor but yeah um this is one of those kits that you can find online for really really cheap and if you do a little bit of paint to it you can get something really nice out of it Kind of the same thing with the Chevelle snap, to, uh, snap Together, or Snap Tight Kit, whatever you want to call it. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to do something more stock, nothing really too crazy. I did find these cool monster truck tires I was going to put on the thing, but ultimately decided not to. And just went with the stock tires. Uh, Hot Wheels monster trucks, so they'd be really wide. But they weren't, they were the same, they, like the same height as the stock tires from the kit. So it wouldn't be super raised up. It would just have really wide tires uh, with really aggressive patterns. Which uh, I think would have been kind of cool. But I just wanted to keep the kind of stock look to it. My idea for this, you can see the bed's all dirty. It's from dry brushing. My idea for this is that it's a work truck that the... Uh, owner of this takes to work and on the weekends just goes off-roading with it that's why it's all filthy you know all around the wheels and fender walls it's not to hide the fact that I kind of screwed up the black paint around the fenders definitely not uh so yeah I mean it gives you stickers but they go on really well they're not peeling they're fine. Kind of see the paint got screwed up there on the back, but it's fine. Here's the underneath. Some minor weathering here and there. Just scratches where it would get scratched up from driving. A little bit of rust here and there on the exhaust. But other than that, it's pretty clean under there. It's not too terrible. It's not falling apart. These little yellow lights on the front are <laughs> were kind of scary to do, but I did do them. Which, fun fact, if you've ever looked at a Ford Raptor and went, I wonder why they have those little lights on there. That's weird. It's actually, it's not a stylistic thing. It's actually a U.S. like um, regulation. Uh, if you look at the old uh, Hummer H1, there's three lights above where the windshield is. And that's because if a vehicle is over a certain length, you have to have three yellow lights. You see that on cargo trucks, uh, big semi trucks, all that kind of stuff. You see them with those big yellow lights on them. That's why. And it's crazy to think that like the Hummer H1 was such a huge truck at the time. But like a Raptor is bigger than that now. Like holy shit. It's crazy. Like, I saw a Hummer H1 the other day, and I went, 
this thing really isn't that big because the Ford Raptor is literally bigger than it. Like, it just doesn't feel as wide as the H1 is. The H1 is much wider. Well, I mean, inside. Like, it's, it's, you have that, the separation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like almost mid engine, that thing. Engine's so far back because of the freaking portals and shit. But anyway, I'm not talking about an H1, I'm talking about a Raptor. Uh, one weird thing, they don't include a third brake light. Don't know why. Uh, you have to paint that. They do include the other brake lights. No idea why that's a thing, but... Eh, I think it looks alright. Anyway, that's for this thing. Another vehicle that I've kind of wanted to talk about... I built it a little while ago, but I don't know, I've been kind of embarrassed to kind of show it off, because it didn't really turn out the best, but whatever, I'll show her off here, is the, I think you say it as Ba Loudgale, I can't really say the name, it's a Hexagear kit, and this is the first Hexagear I ever fully painted, um, the bandit wheel, I matte coated, but that thing is pretty much straight out of the box, and then I just started painting little things after it was fully assembled. Um, this one, I decided, you know, it's going to be this really cool military vehicle. I don't want it looking plasticky. I'm going to go ahead and paint it with some camouflage spray paints from Rust-Oleum, the um, Desert Tan. Whew, was that a mistake? Because that makes so much problems when you're trying to fit stuff together. Suddenly some parts are bigger because they have a layer of paint on them. And you have to kind of scratch it off to put it onto things. And oh my god, man. What a pain in the ass. First of all, you can't build this as the truck mode that this is. You have to build it... As a robot. Like a like a robotic transformer thing. Which is a pain in the ass. Because you kind of... I kind of just didn't want to do that. I wanted to build it as this mode. But you have to transform it. Tr ugh, transform it if you want to do that. Um, but right out of the box. Comes as a robot. Kind of a pain in the ass. But okay. Um, some of the parts just don't fit. When you're trying to put it into this mode. Uh, the knee pads. Because this is like the legs of the robot. Just interfere entirely. I had to wind up taking those off. And big problem was. It just broke. Like really broke. And I had to glue down this whole uh, cab area. Because this part snaps off, snapped off. To like the main body. And that was a pain. So, yeah, not the best, but I did what I did. <laughs> you can actually see where I glued it, which isn't even fully straight. Eh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Even if you butcher a pretty pricey model like this one. <laughs> uh... Well, thankfully, I didn't get this at, like, the prices that I've seen it going for, which is, like, 80 to $90. Thankfully, I got mine for 60 which was good. Like, it was 60 and, like, 5 or $6 for shipping. So, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> I paid more for the, uh, uh, what's it called? Steel Rain. But that kit was different. <laughs> But anyway, when it comes to uh, weathering, it was still, still a pricey model. I just want to say that. But I do like the overall look of this vehicle. I, I, I should say that because I'm talking about this thing like it's a huge disappointment. I like the look of it. I think it's a good looking vehicle. Very interesting. Uh, nothing moves anymore. There's supposed to be a bunch of moving parts. I think just this kind of moves. But nothing really moved on this thing anymore I kind of glued everything down because it just kept falling apart it was a big pain in the ass 
Um, but I did something a little bit different with weathering. I was going to go with like brown and silver to kind of rust it and scratch it. But I just decided, you know what, why don't I try black? And that's what I did. Just did black paint on the, believe it or not, the side of the brush, not even at the tip of the brush. It was like a flat brush and just kind of went along the edges with it. I watched a video on Gundam weathering and that's how the guy was doing it. And I said, you know what, that looks interesting. Let me try that. And I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that technique. Um, I would also take very, 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 very little amount of paint, almost nothing, on the brush, and then just dry brush it all over the areas that I think all the flat surfaces, where they would walk on this thing to get inside, and it would get worn. You guys know the drill. <laughs> Did it a little bit heavier on these fork things that aren't even aligned, because they got glued that way, and they look horrible. Because uh, I imagine that they get worn and dirty. Tires are weathered. But this thing is a big behemoth. It's a very big vehicle. You can see there's the cockpit. I imagine you have to be wearing some sort of full body armor in there. It might be too hard to hit someone with this thing. I don't know. Or in this thing. Um, maybe it's really fast in its universe. No, no. It's cool, though. I do like the whole... This thing kind of does remind me of the Tumbler from Batman. Because there's no axles. Like, even in the rear. There's nothing holding the wheels in a traditional sense. So, that is kind of cool. I do like that. Even on the front end, there's no axle. It's just attached like that. Let me show you this side. But that's actually the arms of the mechs that you're supposed to fold up like that. Mechs. I said mech. <laughs> I meant to say mech, I mean. But, um, yeah, that's this thing. Definitely an interesting vehicle. And, um, I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think of it. It's just been sitting here on this little display base that I've been working on. Making like a little military fortress here. You got the MB Jeep. This huge 124th scale tank that my friend tells me is an infantry fighting tank. Um, I'm not an expert. I don't know. You got a bunch of little things here. This was a little... Uh, Thing that I picked up at the Big Bad Toy Store. Pretty cool. We got the Barrett, which I painted and weathered. I wonder where that's going. Not on this. I'll give you a hint. Not on that at all. But um, something that is coming. I will say that. Not something that I built, but something that someone else built. I wonder what that could be. Well, I mean, if you follow me, you know exactly what it is. Um, but as you can see, you got the mechs. Which, I probably should do a better video on these someday. They're pretty damn awesome. And they are in scale with my cars. Those are 124th scale figures in there. They're pretty cool. My only complaint is that they're very hard to get. Um, they're expensive, but they're worth it. But they are only available for Chinese sellers. Very, very rarely can you get them in America. Sometimes they are... American sellers sometimes they're based in Canada like the website Canadian Gundam had this one um, But most of the time they're on like Chinese based websites uh, You can still find them on eBay, but again, they're all From China, so they're gonna take a while to get to you But um, they're great. They are really really cool I'd love to see more from them and they're coming out with a new one Which is cool the big bad toy store gets them in every now and again and I might get the I might get the new one because it's based on this one with that canopy. So I don't know. It's pretty damn cool. So yeah, I will see you guys next time and uh, have a good one.